Hello folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this time we're going to be discussing linear motion and definitions of linear motion. Linear motion, if you're defining this for an exam question, is the movement of a body, so that means a person or an object, in a straight or curved line where all of the parts move at the same distance in the same direction over the same time. Please remember when you're defining this for exams, you need all three elements as part of your definition. The same distance, the same direction, the same time, otherwise you will not gain any marks in relation to that. So do, do remember that. To create linear motion, we must place a direct force through a body's center of mass. You'll also need some examples of linear motion in terms of sport, the simplest example that you can think of is a shot put. So as a shot put is thrown, the path that it travels in is a curved line. And so you can see there from the picture that I've shown, the curved angle of a shot put thrown through the air. Another good example, if you looked from a bird's eye point of view, so top down onto a bobsleigh, going past the track, that runs in a straight or curved path. Other examples that I've also seen is if you were talking about a 100 meter sprinter running from start to finish, although their arms and legs are not running in a straight or curved path, the center of the body, e.g. the rectus abdominis or the torso, remains the same. So that runs in a straight path from start to finish. So they are three good examples of linear motion. When we're talking about linear motion, you must also remember about Newton's first law of inertia, which we've covered before. And how that applies to linear motion is that once you create linear motion, so if I put a direct force through the body's center of mass and moves the object in a straight or a curved path, it will remain in linear motion or in that state of motion unless some other force acts upon it, like air resistance, friction, etc, etc. But it will remain in linear motion until some other force acts upon it. In order to work with linear motion in the exam questions, you're often asked about these factors that help define linear motion and we call those descriptors. These are the following. Distance, displacement, speed, velocity and either acceleration or deceleration. Some of these you've met before. For your exam you'll need to define them and be able to use them in some way towards a sporting example or, or calculation. So we'll briefly go through these. Distance is defined as the total length of a path covered from one position to, a to another, e.g. how far have you travelled? And so if we were looking at something uh, generally, we're, we're talking about measuring in metres. A good example of this, the London Marathon measured in metres is 42,195 metres. So that would be the distance, for example, Mo Farah had travelled from start to finish. This slightly differs from displacement. Now displacement is the shortest route from start to finish. Again, we measure that in meters. And if you look at the image above, this is the image of the, the route of the London Marathon. So thinking about what we've just said, the distance of the London Marathon is over 42,000 meters. So if I followed that path that I've got on the screen across London, that would be about 42,000 and so metres. However, the displacement is the shortest route from the end point to the start point. And so therefore, the shortest route here is actually only 10,000 metres. So that would be the displacement. Speed is the rate of change in distance. And to define speed, other than that statement that we've just made, we always use the same calculation, which is distance measured in meters 
divided by time taken in seconds. And that means speed is measured in meters per second, which is very important when you're doing any of these calculations is to not only write down your workings out and what things are measured in, but also what the result is measured in. So in this case, speed, which is measured in meters per second. Now the other factors, uh, sorry, the other descriptors, velocity and acceleration, you've met before, and we've done screencasts of those before. So they are here on the screen again. Please go over those from the previous screencast or make a note of these, but we have met these before when dealing in the Newton's Law screencast. Again, please make sure you make sure you understand what each aspect is actually measured in. So velocity is measured in meters per second. And acceleration, again, we've met this before. Take your time, freeze the screen if you need to go over this again but we have met that in the Newton's Law screencast. We haven't discussed deceleration though, and so if you're talking about acceleration is the change in velocity or the, the change in the speed of an object or, or a body, then deceleration happens when the velocity becomes negative. So if you end up doing a calculation for acceleration and it becomes a minus number, then we're talking about deceleration. We're slowing down, actually, because we're not accelerating anymore. Or if there is a decrease in velocity over time, and we'll discuss this in the velocity time graph screencast that will be the next one you probably will watch after this one. So if there is a decrease in velocity over time, we get the deceleration effect. Okay, once again, thanks for watching. And if you need more help with biomechanics or any other aspect of OCRA Level PE, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.